In the first chapter of Moby Dick, called Loomings, Ishmael gives readers the key to the entire novel. Here's what he says. In describing the various ways that humans are drawn to the ocean, he cites the myth of Narcissus. However, he revises the myth to suit his purposes. And still deeper, the meaning of that story of Narcissus, who, because he could not grasp the tormenting, mild image he saw in the fountain, plunged into it and was drowned. But that same image we ourselves see in all rivers and oceans, it is the image of the ungraspable phantom of life, and this is the key to it all. The key to it all. How is this plunge for the ungraspable phantom of life, the key to it all. The key to life, the key to the novel Moby Dick. Well, it's important to note that in the myth of Narcissus, as described by Ovid, uh, Narcissus is so enamored of his image in water that he simply stares at it and stays still for such a long time that he pines away and dies. In other words, he does not dive in after his own image. So how is this image of Narcissus diving into the water after his own image, how is this the key to it all? Well, as we go through the novel Moby Dick, we find that this image resonates in several contexts. The most obvious one is this. Uh, throughout the novel, Ishmael, our narrator, uh, claims that everyone has a sort of image uh, of, of beauty or, or truth that he quests for his entire life, but the image is always out of his grasp. It's an ever-receding image. In other words, we are incomplete, and we pine for some image that might complete us, but we are doomed never to grasp that image. So here we see Narcissus diving in, trying to grasp that image that might complete him. So how does one react to this dilemma? We see Ahab, clearly he, he believes that killing Moby Dick will somehow complete him, will give him back what he has lost. He's lost his leg, but also there's a suggestion that he's lost more than his leg, um, that his very groin has been pierced, and he's trying to recover his male fertility. And the quest for the whale is monomaniacal, and he's willing to risk the lives of all of his men and himself. Ishmael also is a quester for, for beauty and truth, but he seems much more relaxed, much more open to the joy of motion, of thinking, uh, of process. So there are two different models for questing for that image. So that's one way to think about how Narcissus resonates throughout the novel, but there are others. Think about it. If when you look at your image in water, what do you see? You, of course, see your image reflected back to you, but you can also see through your image um, the light uh, you, and th that emanates from you, that comes from behind you, is also refracted by the water. So the water is both reflective and refractive. Um, therefore, it becomes a, 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 a marker, a threshold of self and other. I see myself in the water reflected back to me, but I see through my image to the depths of the water beyond. So this idea of reflection and refraction is, is very important for two reasons. One, if I look at the water and only attend to my reflection, then I am very keen on a double of myself. There's a kind of narcissistic doubling, a desire to turn the world around me into some version of myself. Now again, Ahab is the monomaniac, the monomaniac does this. In the famous chapter later in the novel called Dubloon, which is obviously a pun for doubling, doubling when Ahab looks at the coin um, attached to the masthead, it um, simply is a mirror reflecting him back to himself. Uh, the sun is Ahab, the mountain is Ahab, all are Ahab. So narcissism in the novel can become a kind of doubling. Now we see all kinds of doublings in the novel. Uh, we can see it even with Ishmael and Queequeg, um, a civilized half and a, a sort of um, uncultured half um, that would make a whole self. Uh, we see various doublings of Ahab, reflections of his character. Fadala, which seems to reflect his more violent impulses, but Pip, who reflects his more um, generous impulses. 
So that's one way this idea of reflection and refraction plays into the novel. But there's another. Uh, if you think about the uh, famous whiteness of the whale chapter, uh, one reason whiteness is so horrifying, Ishmael says, is because it suggests that white light that has not yet been reflected or refracted. Everything on earth that we can see is either a um, reflection of the white light or a refraction of the white light. Newton showed this in his famous experiment. So there's a sense that if we somehow move beyond the refraction and the reflection, what is, what is behind appearance? What is behind color? What is behind what we sense? Nothing. A void. So that's one way the reflection and refraction plays into the novel. Um, and there's, there's another way in, um, in the chapter of the fountain where Ishmael talks about how you know, those who have insight into the world are willing to enter into the mist of confusion. But the deeper you go into the mist of the confusion, the more likely it is that the, the mist, the droplets will uh, refract into a rainbow. So this, this kind of idea that the ideal of intellectual questing is to go so deeply into doubt that eventually you have a kind of breakthrough. So there are, there, there are really three different ways then, I guess, not just two, three different ways that refraction, ref, reflection, reflection, refraction show up in the novel. So um, there, there are other ways that this image um, resonates in the novel as well. I'll just list one of them, the whole idea of self-consciousness. Certainly when you look at your image in, a, in, a, in water or a mirror, that's a symbol of self-consciousness, which is an act of reflection in which you are watching yourself do something just as your image might watch, be watching you do something. So um, we've talked about how in Emerson that the idea of self-consciousness is, is a marker for the fall from a sense of harmony to disharmony, um, for a sense of participation in the collective to a sense of isolation. How does this play out in Moby Dick, which is replete with the book of Genesis, replete with the Bible? How does the role of self-consciousness play out, the role of thought play out, in the novel as well. There are other ways that this image is the key to it all. Uh, you have a few to think about as you go through the novel.